So do you really know how far you're running? Hi and welcome to Aegis Runner, I'm Ralph. Today I'm running a test. I'm running a test between all my GPS tracking devices just to see what the differences are because I'm kind of curious. I have four devices I'm carrying today, my Galaxy S20 smartphone, my Galaxy Watch 4, my Garmin InReach Mini, which is a satellite tracker, and my newest toy is a Garmin 4 Runner 245 running watch. I'm going to test all those today and while I'm doing that, I'm going to talk to you about GPS and how these systems work just for so you understand and maybe decide what might work best for you. Do you want to change what you're doing today? So I stood in one position and start all four devices and about every 15 to 20 minutes we'll stop, take a reading of each and see how they're different. So I'm going to do my first check. My Garmin InReach Mini says 0.9 and by the way it only reads out to the nearest tenth of a mile. My other devices read out to the nearest hundredth of a mile. We'll talk about that later. My Garmin 4 Runner says 0.87 miles. My Galaxy Watch 4 says 0.84. And my phone, I'm using a RunKeeper app, says 0.86 miles. So we see they're all pretty close at the moment. A uh, little bits of difference, but not a lot. Of course, you know that GPS stands for a Global Positioning System. And in the United States, when you hear GPS, they're typically referring to a satellite network put up by the US government, Reed Military, in the late 1970s. About 10 years later in the 80s, they opened it up to civilian use. And that's what most GPS systems use today, unless you see or hear otherwise and it's a system of roughly I think 31 or 33 satellites orbiting the earth that provides GPS services to phones and watches or whatever you might have. Uh, typically it works by triangulation in other words you get signals from three satellites to fix your position. So it's time to do another check. My phone reads 1.84 miles. My inReach Mini says 1.9. My Forerunner says uh, uh, 1.87. And my Galaxy Watch says 1.8 miles. So we're starting to see some greater differences now after about a little under two miles. Now my cell phone and your cell phone work a little differently. They have a GPS receiver in them, but they have something called A GPS, and A stands for assisted. Assisted by what? Well, cell towers, of course. They're pinging cell towers, trying to figure out your position based on signal strength and, and how that compares to multiple cell towers. So they use HEPS and I noticed that makes a difference when I trail run. When I trail run, I go in areas that have little or no cell signal and I get big differences in the mileage between my cell phone and my satellite tracker here in my Garmin inReach. But in a neighborhood like this, it probably is not that big of a difference, but we'll see. Now, one good thing about HEPS is it works inside because it's pinging cell towers. For satellite trackers to work, like my two Garmin products, I need to be outside. It needs to be able to see the sky to work. So there is a little advantage in that if you're trying to figure out your position inside. I doubt you're running too much inside, but it is available if you need it. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, scroll down just a teensy weensy bit and hit that like icon. That really helps out my channel. Thank you. Now moving on to my Galaxy Watch 4. It again has a GPS receiver, but it has a little a button you can toggle that says improve accuracy. It says using Wi-Fi, even though you don't have Wi-Fi on, I have it off on my watch. It somehow uses Wi-Fi signals around me to improve location accuracy. So we'll see how that works at the end of this test. Now both my Garmin products are satellite trackers. They do not have any cell uh, coverage. They do have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, at least my inReach has Bluetooth that doesn't have Wi-Fi. And I have Bluetooth on, so it's connected to my phone, but as far as I know, it doesn't leverage anything off the phone. They both work strictly off GPS with some differences. Now my Garmin 4 Runner 245 uses GPS, but you can add a second satellite network to it to help improve accuracy and, and maybe problems with sky conditions if it's cloudy like today or there's some weather going on. And you have two choices. You can do uh, GLASNOS, which is a Russian satellite network, or Galileo, which is a European satellite network. So I'm using both the GPS US satellite network and the Galileo satellite network to see what results I get. So it's kind of a GPS with an enhancement. So let's do another check. My phone says 2.72 miles. My Garmin inReach Mini says 2.8. Again, it only reads out to the nearest uh, tenth of a mile. My Forerunner says 2.79. And my Galaxy Watch 4 says 2.67. So if you enjoy running or a like-minded runner like me, then please consider subscribing and click that subscribe icon down in the corner of this video anytime. Thank you so much. So my Garmin InReach Mini 
is a little different than the others. It uses a different satellite network. I originally got this for trail running because I would trail run where there's areas with no cell coverage. I want something in an emergency. It actually, you can send and receive texts. It also has an SOS function where I can get help if I need it. And that's really why I bought it. But of course, it also tracks mileage and where you're running and location and so forth. So let's do another check. My phone says 3.66 miles. My forerunner says 3.75. My inReach says 3.7, and my Galaxy Watch 4 says 3.58. Now this tracker uses the Iridium satellite network. I don't know if you ever heard of that. It's a huge satellite network. There's over 60 satellites orbiting around the Earth, and it gives coverage really across the globe. I could take this inReach and go run in Australia or Europe or wherever, and it should allow me to send and receive text and track my location. So it uses that Iridium satellite network. Now the downside of that is it costs. You have to pay a subscription service to use that network, but it's worth it to me to have the, the safety of knowing I can get help or send and receive text when I'm out on the trail alone by myself. So let's do a final check. I think I'm done running. My phone says 4.54 miles. My in rate says 4.6. My forerunner says 4.64. And my Galaxy Watch 4 says 4.44 miles. So we're getting, again, some differences. I'm going to go inside and crunch some numbers, look at the data, and see what kind of conclusions we can draw. So hang on for just a second. Hey, welcome back to my studio. So I took all those values that when I stopped and did my checks, put them in a table, which I'm showing you right now. Now, don't, don't try and read all that data. You're not going to be able to, to see all that or decipher it very well, especially if you're looking at this video on your, on your smartphone or something like that. But I really want to talk to you about the bottom row. The bottom row is the percent. And what that is, for each check, I subtracted the highest uh, mileage from the lowest mileage and took that difference and divide it by the average of all four readings. So that's percent difference that we see across all four devices. And of course, I did that five for five checks. So my first conclusion is that the percentage difference uh, improves the longer you run. So you can see if you look at that bottom row, the percentage starts at seven, almost 7% 7 when I did my first check, a little less than a mile. And by the time I finished at four and a half miles, it was down to 4.4% difference. Now that percentage is the range, which is the highest value minus the lowest value of the four uh, GPS devices I had divided by the average of the four. So again, that improves with time. I don't know if I ran 10 miles or 15 or 20 miles. On a percentage basis, that would probably be even lower. And you can see on an absolute basis, at the end of the day, at four and a half miles, the difference between all four devices was only two tenths of a mile. Now you got to keep in mind my Garmin inReach only reports out to the nearest tenth of a mile. So that's kind of a factor a little bit. The others are reporting out to the nearest hundredth of a mile. So a couple other conclusions I drew, my two Garmin devices, the Garmin inReach and the Forerunner watch, were pretty close. They may even be identical. Again, my inReach only uh, reports out to the nearest tenth of a mile. The Forerunner does to the nearest hundredth of a mile. In fact, at the final check, if I were to round the Forerunner down to 4.6, they would be exactly the same. So my two devices that use only satellites, don't have any Wi-Fi or any cell signal, uh, appear to be the best. And, and again, those two devices are using different satellite networks. My inReach is using the Iridium satellite network, and my Forerunner I had set to use the US GPS satellite network plus European Galileo satellite network. So those gave me the best value. So I kind of, I've always thought that my inReach was my gold standard as far as mileage. When I ran long runs, whether I did it on a trail or, or around the neighborhood, I would always use my inReach as my de facto mileage default. Now you can see the worst device on here as far as the lowest rating was my Galaxy Watch. You can see it, it was off uh, by, at the end of the day, two tenths of a mile. Now maybe you don't care about two tenths of a mile. I don't know, I care too much about two tenths of a mile. So my smartwatch is okay. Again, it uses the US GPS satellite network, um, but, and also I have that toggle on uh, to use Wi-Fi. So it's looking at Wi-Fi signals around the area and using that to improve its location accuracy. So if you think about my Galaxy Watch 4, it's really meant to be a smart watch. It's really meant to pair with my phone. I can answer texts. I can even answer the phone and talk on the phone through my watch. So it's meant to do a lot of other things. It's got oxygen sensor. It's got body composition sensors and things like this it can do. So it's meant to be a holistic kind of device. Whereas my two Garmin devices are really meant for satellite tracking. So they do pretty good. My phone, my Galaxy phone was kind of in the middle of the pack. It was a little more than the Galaxy Watch, but it was slightly less than the two Garmin devices. In fact, if I throw the watch out, uh, the, uh, of the of the pack, 
the, the Galaxy phone was only a tenth behind my two Garmin devices, so that's pretty doggone good. Now my phone, and maybe a lot of phones say this, are generally accurate within 50 meters. Now my two Garmin devices, they actually on their website brag about their GPS receivers, and they claim they can get within 10 meter accuracy. So again, I'm not surprised that two Garmin devices uh, are, are in pretty close agreement and maybe are the really spot on devices. I kind of trust my Garmin devices as far as the distance I run, a little less so of the, of the phone and even more so with my watch. So what does all, all this mean for you? Well, if you're a hobbyist runner like I am, any of these devices I think are fine. Even my, even my Galaxy Watch 4 would be fine for what my purposes and what I do, uh, enjoying running, going out running the occasional race. They're all fine, they're all acceptable. Uh, if you're a little more interested in, in, in running in areas with maybe poor cell signal or you may not have good cell signal, then you may want something like a Garmin device which relies more on satellites, less on Wi-Fi, less on mobile networks. Otherwise, I think they're all fine. Just recognize that uh, some do differently than others, some do better than others. I like my Garmin devices, and as I said, in the future, I will do a review of my Garmin 4Runner. I also plan to do one on my Garmin inReach, which I've had for a couple of years and, and really like it a lot. And I'll cover those in a future video. Hey, what kind of a device are you using to track your mileage? If you'd like to comment on that, feel free to do that down below. Leave me a comment, share what you're doing, what you think of it. I like to learn from uh, my viewers and, and what they're doing, so feel free to share that. I'll, those are always welcome. Hey, thanks again for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I really enjoy sharing uh, what I learn and, and experience in running. Hope you enjoy it too. If you do, please scroll down and hit that like icon. And if you're not a subscriber, I'd really love to have you tag along and hit that subscribe icon. And, Stay with me. Thanks again and happy running.